Hey guys, I'm back and um, we're going to have a quick look at three point lighting today. Um, so this is just a quick render I fired out about two or three minutes ago. And it's just a good technique for getting you some basic lighting set up that looks a hell of a lot better than any kind of default lighting like camera light or anything like that. Um, I'm going to show you how to set that up on this. Ah, I hate it when that comes up. It always says there's a new version of I show you, there's not. Anyway. I'm going to show you how to set that up on this head mesh that I've got, um, but it works for kind of lots of different kind of renders. Um, anyway, let's get to it. So I'm just going to show you the render manager here. So I've just fired off a couple of renders a minute ago. So this is using three point lighting, and then if I just switch to the camera light, see the difference, the bleached out, boring camera light that makes everything look very fake, and then the three point lighting technique. Um, where we've got a bit of mood to it, um, to the lighting in general. So we've got one light kind of coming down from here, which is the key light. Uh, fill light just filling in the shadows, and then the rim light just casting a couple of highlights on the ear there. But there's some inside the ear that I don't really want, but I'll get to that when we do it. So I'm just going to get rid of my lights in this scene. So the way I set it up is I do it one light at a time. So three point lighting, as the name would suggest, involves three lights. So for the main light, I tend to use an area light um, just for its ability to cast nice soft shadows. So I've dropped an area light in the scene. I'm just going to jump into perspective mode a minute. What I want to do is position this light about 45 degrees from the camera just pointing down and aimed at our subject I want it a little bit higher up than the camera as well I mean humans are sympathetic to lighting from above um, and that's because that's the way the world is um, the sunlight and the sky comes from above and we're used to that so we like it, we like to see it so, I'm in perspective mode. I've got my area light pointing in the wrong direction. Well, not entirely the wrong direction, just pointing down there like that. Um, I'm just going to jump the samples up on the shadows. I'm just going to put four on for this one, nothing too complex. And then I'm going to have a quick look back in camera mode. So in camera mode, you can see our, I'm going to call it, key light. Just double click to change the name of it. Our key light's coming down here, it's giving us a bit of light on this side of this guy's face and the rest is in shadow so it's worth rendering that out. <clears throat> so because we've added a, a light to the scene the camera light will be off. So I'm rendering this massive so it's running a little bit slower than what I would like for the sake of a quick tutorial but we'll get by. So that's kind of all right. Um, I could tweak that. I can back it down a little bit, move it around a little bit, but we've got instantly got a lot more mood than you would get from just a straight camera light render, which doesn't really give you any mood whatsoever. Um, so yeah, we're already kind of there, but this is quite dramatic because we've got this heavy uh, shadow area. Um, if that's what you're after, then cool, but we can lighten that up a little bit. So, I'm going to jump back into perspective mode. So, almost kind of opposite. I'm going to move that around a little bit further. Almost kind of opposite this light. So, just over this side, somewhere around here, we want another light. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter what, what kind of light we use for the fill light. <clears throat> I'm just going to put this roughly into position, a little bit lower down than the key light, name it fill. Then move that too high up there. And as usual my fans are kicking in. Somewhere around there. Jump back into camera mode. Here. 
and that fill light is basically far too bright we've now got the same intensity light on this side as we have on this side so for this fill light which I'm using a point light for I'm going to back it right down to somewhere in the region of 0 0.25 something like that it will depend on your scene but it needs to be a hell of a lot less than your key light uh, it is only doing a little bit of a fill job so what I do next is I turn off the key light in both the editor and the renderer so you can see this fill is just gonna lighten these areas and now render out each light one at a time so that is gonna fill in the shaded areas this sorry the areas of shadow that I've got here but it's casting shadow back which I don't really want um, so for this fill light I'm just gonna turn the shadows off and I'm probably going to back it down a little bit because looking at the render manager there it's a little bit more than what I wanted, it's a little bit too bright for what I wanted so I'm going to drop down to about 0 0.2 and even in the, uh, the 3D view here we can see that it's still lighting this side a little bit um, that will be alright yep, happy with that so next job is to combine the two so I'm going to turn my key light back on fill lights already on and do a render with both so you can see from our first render which was just the key light, the area light we've got this heavy shadow area the new one that's softened off quite a lot I mean our fill light here could even come back a little bit further but I don't mind that, that's okay and to be honest a lot of times I know this is called three point lighting but a lot of times I just stop with the two um, I, I like the effect that that gives, it gives you good control, you can even kind of start to cast a little bit of coloured light into the scene, let's get a bit of warmth into this, not too much probably on both actually um, so you can kind of start to tweak the colours and get some different mood on, I'm going to pull the fill light back a little bit further so the next light to place in the scene is the rim light and this is generally used, I mean I very very rarely use, what am I doing, I don't want to view that one, I very rarely use the the rim light um, but it's used to kind of lift lift your, your object that you're lighting off the background so this is the rim light here having this effect on his head and on his ear, it just, it just lifts off a little bit so the way you set up a rim light is throw a new light into the scene but here's a point light again I'm not too bothered what it is I call this rim I'm just going to quickly turn off my other lights in both editor and renderer again it's, it's always worth lighting one light at a time um, then you can actually see the influence that one light is having on the scene so move the rim light back um, I'm looking, again I'm using perspective mode generally to position things which is always a good tip um, so the rim light could be quite high up and again we just wanted to pick out the edges so looking at our render from before it's this edge that we want um, this one's quite bright because that's where our key light is hitting our object or our character so we want to just like this area here so it's not doing that at the moment that could be because our light's not powerful enough and it's not it's just the position I would say so I'm just gonna bring it over to this side a little bit and we can see that's changing things there I'm gonna hit render there so this should now be just the rim light and it is and yeah that's great that's exactly what I wanted just a bit of the head uh, lit there and a bit of the ear perfect quite happy with that and we could always power that up if I wanted in fact I will power it up to 2.5 again I'm going to turn the shadows off with that light and then I'm going to switch all my lights back on in both editor and renderer hit the render button and you can see the rim light just picking the head out there I don't like it because it's very fake I mean it's it's not really a, a legitimate way of it's not a real 
kind of way of lighting things. It wouldn't happen in, in real circumstances. Um, but it can be good for defining objects that are kind of blending into the background a little bit and it's an old classic technique. But that is basically our three point lighting done. So from something like that, we've very quickly gone from a boring, flat, pasty, horrible render to something like this where we've got uh, a bit of control um, and a lot more mood. And, and obviously, depending on what you want to do with it, you can really power up the uh, key light, uh, knock the fill light right back down, and cast some coloured light in there. You've got a lot of control over what you want to actually get. Um, and it's, it's just a technique that I fall back on over and over again. So that's it for this one. I hope you've learned something there. Um, if you post anything, if you do anything with it, as usual, let me know. Um, as always, loads more stuff on mac3dsoftware.com and I will see you soon.